Hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar brought to you by Kenanga Investment Bank. Today, uh, our webinar title is Live Chat with Nascon Berhad, Twin Engines for Growth. So welcome to this session. So before we proceed further, allow me to share with you about one amazing CSR project by Kenanga Investment Bank. Uh, th this is Kenanga Humankind Projects titled Meals That Give. All right. So on your screen, you have seen the, the poster. So what Kenanga aim to do is to raise 3,000 ringgit through this project. So for we want to urge all of you here, uh, if you want to, uh, if you can, if you are able, you may pledge a meal at 20 ringgit. You may just stand, scan this QR code where you take you to a landing page where you can uh, you know, see if you want to donate to this course or not. So what happened is that Kananga, for every 20 ringgit for one meal that you pledge, Kananga will match meal for meal for you. So this meal will be distributed to children in need. So for every meal that you pledge, at least two person will not have to go hungry. And who will provide this meal? So this meal will be provided by Cafe Includes. So for that, it will help to sustain the employment opportunities for the dis disabled employees at Cafe Includes and also provide training and development to disabled employees at Cafe Includes. All right. So the call to action is, you know, scan this QR code at the bottom right corner where you're able to uh, donate 20 ringgit to pledge a meal to the uh, person in needs. All right. So just a, a, a short shout out. So, all right. So uh, welcome to this session, live chat with Nescon Berhad. So disclaimer is whatever we share in this session is only for educational purpose. So in no way that we give any recommendation for you to buy or sell any listed companies that we mentioned here. So should you decide to make any investment decisions, you're 100% responsible for all your investment risk. All right, so today we are very honored to have invited uh, Dato Dr. Lim Jigin, the Group Managing Director of Nescom Berhad, to share with us their business, uh, their business model as well as their growth prospect. All right, so allow me to briefly introduce uh, Nescon. So listed in ACE Market in June 2021, Nescom Berhad is a construction company that is specialized in building and infrastructure construction services. So Nescon's business journey began humbly in 2010 by securing its first infrastructure construction project to provide earthworks and infrastructure works for a state-sponsored agropolitan project before venturing into building construction in 2014. So throughout these years, Nescon has been expanding its, its construction capabilities as well as its construction portfolios in Malaysia. So in late last year, Nescon ventured into renewable energy division, in particular focusing on solar photovoltaic rooftop system for commercial industrial segment as well as exploring opportunities for building large-scale solar PV plants. So before we call upon uh, our speaker today, uh, Dr. Dr. Lim Jigin, so uh, allow us to play a short corporate video for you. Um, yep, saying you may go ahead and share your screen. Okay, give me a minute. Uh. Let me just try to share screen. Nescon Berhad via its wholly owned subsidiaries Nescon Infra Syndrome Berhad and Nescon Builders Syndrome Berhad have a leading mission to consistently deliver unparalleled value to our clients and dedicated to delivering sustainable world-class urban development solutions for civil engineering infrastructure and building construction works. Nescon Infra Syndrome Berhad focuses on all types of civil engineering and key infrastructure projects, while Nescon Builders Syndrome Berhad primarily involves in securing and carrying out construction works for residential, commercial and industrial properties. Following the impressive list of completed projects that demonstrated our strong competency, we, Nescon, and vision to be the leading construction and civil engineering service provider in Malaysia. Nescon 
synonymous with quality and distinction in areas of his expertise, is fully committed to play a role in improving our nation's standard of living and advancing of society to a better tomorrow. Cultivating integrity from NASCON, we are ready to take challenges. Our people resilience, our focus on details, our innovative spirits are the driving forces to better innovate and elevate our performance to attain excellence. NASCON is ready to set new standards for building construction and infrastructure development and deliver superior project outcomes with innovative engineering solutions. Comprising a team of dedicated and accomplished team of engineers and professional personnel with the strategic and tactical training to mobilize human and material resources to ensure optimal project outcomes is the bedrock of NESCON's success. NESCON leverages on the complementary skills of our experts to deliver a positive impact, whilst not forgetting our responsibility in ensuring higher standards of quality, environmental, safety and health in the workplace. We carefully consider the possible outcomes of projects from all aspects, both in the short term and the foreseeable future, to achieve a more sustainable future for all. Guided by sound principles and supported by stable finance, NESCON is well positioned to fulfill its promises for timely and outstanding project delivery. Our commitment to ethical business practices has earned us the trust of everyone we work with, as evidenced by our expanding portfolio of diverse projects of close working relationships with clients, regulatory agencies, as well as members of the public. And we will continue to carry out our business with the integrity as our principle, connecting and promoting the needs of our communities as our mandate, and the pursuit of excellence as our guide. By synergizing our diverse expertise and resources, we strive to create values for clients by constantly delivering desirable results with capable management, ample workforce, timely delivery, modern construction machinery and equipment, as well as sound management principles and stable financial standing. Collectively, these strengths will elevate NESCON in good stead to further excel in the construction and property sector and continue to aggressively pursue continuing growth, new horizons and venturing into a more aggressive and fruitful participation in its business nature. Holding true to our core values, we constantly improve our capabilities and challenge ourselves to adhere to rigorous standards of safety, reliability and practicality. We deliver on our promises to our stakeholders from bottom up and we develop our people to their full potential. Be part of our revolutionary journey as we expand our footprint and strengthen our position in the industry. We, NESCON, a partner of choice for construction. NESCON, building integrity and connecting communities. All right, so um, I think the later part of the video, the video is not moving, only the audio is audible, right? So, but no worries, I think uh, in a short while, we will drop you the link for you to watch the corporate video, all right? So uh, without further ado, uh, may I introduce and welcome the Group Managing Director of NASCON, uh, Dato Dr. Lim Jigin, to come to our uh, webinar, all right? Dato, how are you? Oh, good evening to everyone to join us. Uh, sorry, you are. I can barely hear you. Uh, good evening to everyone who managed to join us this evening. All right. Yes. Now can we, can uh, you can be heard. All right. So I'll hand over the session to you, Dato. Okay. Uh, uh, 
for the presentation, I will introduce my team member Yasing uh, to do the uh, presentation on behalf of the company. Uh. Then later part, I will take on on the uh, Q&A sessions. Uh. Uh, Yasing, you please go ahead with the uh, corporate presentation. Okay, thanks a lot, Dr. Deep. Uh, good evening, everyone. I will take a, a possibly about 30 minutes to run the presentation about uh, tonight. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. We know every, some of you may have uh, heard the presentation or did watch the webinar before, but today we try to bring you a number of new perspectives about this company. Uh, Shane, in the event if I lost my voice or the thing not moving, please alert me accordingly. Uh, I'll cover a number of topics between today. First, corporate overview. When you study the next Concord, the company started with two subsidiaries. First one will be the Nexcom infrastructure, uh, Sandem Bahad. The second, Nexcom, Nexcom Builder. They involve in like civil engineering infrastructure work as well as building uh, construction work for building different kinds of the high rise building and low rise building. But that was what you learned in prospectus. When you flip the annual report of the, this year 2022, you will see that another new company, a new subsidiary incorporated under the group called Nexcon Sustainable Solution. And this will be the title of the day, Twin Engine of Group. The company also venture and expand into the renewable energy activity and maintenance work. With this, the company have another two subsidiary, M1 Solar and Two Solar. I'll talk more about this later on. The company have a couple of directors. I uh, will not go through one by one in view of the time saving. I will only focus on like today, we have uh, Dato Dr. Lim, uh, is a managing director of the company. Uh, he is a person who co-founded this company with Mr. Ong, another ED. These two gentlemen established this company since 2010 and brought to where it is today, become a listed entity uh, in 29 June 2021. Subsequently, we have a couple of directors. Today, we have finance director, CFO, Ms. Lim Jusing, a few uh, independent directors, and also newly appointed another uh, lady director on about December 2021. With this, the whole board not only comprise and fulfill with the listing requirement, but also fulfill the corporate governance requirement as well. Business overview. Since 2010, the company is registered G7 contractor under CIDB. When we say this G7, it means that the company able to undertake any construction job above 10 million of undivided value. So with this, the company may completed about 29 construction projects worth close to about 981 million over the past, until today about 11 to 12 years. They've been completed the job for residential, commercial, industrial, mixed development, for civil engineering, you cover like a work, road work, bridge, drainage work. What has been changed compared with the IPO prospectus and annual report? The company start expanding into another new engine of growth, renewable energy division. First, establish this company, Nexcon Sustainable Solutions and Bahad, and establish another two, M1 Solar Sanem Bahad and M2 Solar Sanem Bahad. What the company want to venture is first, try to focus into solar renewable energy for the rooftop, especially for like commercial building, industrial building, but also explore if there's any opportunity to build like large scale solar PV plant in the future. With this, the company incorporate two new subsidiaries under this uh, Nescon Sustainable Solution. First one is N1 Solar, second one is N2 Solar. On the left, the company play the role as an EPCC contractor. EPCC is stand for Engineering, Procurement, Construction and Commissioning. It means you provide a construction service in the event. If you are the building owner, you want to install the rooftop solar, please feel free to contact Nexcon. We are here to provide the service to you as an EPCC service provider. At the same time, on the right, the company also can play a role as a solar PV system and investment in the solar PV plant. It means that the company also can play a role as an asset owner in the event that you may feel that the rooftop system, you want to co-invest with the Nexcon sustainable subsidiary. So with this, it plays a very flexible role to compete in this renewable energy division. The past record, I will not spend too much time to talk about past record, which focus more on future. 
what we need to share with all the audience is SIN 2010 about eight completed projects, 830. Uh, 8 million and civil work is about 21 contract completed 144 million okay more important is for all the investors like you and me you will focus on like based on 31st march 2022 what are the outstanding outstanding contract so the outstanding contract value from the contract secure is about 1.5 billion Unbuilt outstanding contracts about 1.12 billion. It means that assuming the burn rate, it means that the revenue able to recognize by the company about four to five hundred million every single financial year. The financial year of this company is uh, first of January until 31st of December of every calendar year. So with about four to five hundred million, it means that this outstanding order book can give the investor an earning visibility to recognize over the next two to three years. The second thing we will uh, share with everyone is the type of the project secured by the company is not a single monotone. It will combination like high-rise resi resi residential building, mixed development, as well as commercial and industrial building. Because subsequently, I will share with you, you need to diversify in order to cater with the up and down of the cycle, including in the property market. In terms of customer-wide, they are the project secured by uh, different customer group like uh, Low and Low Group, uh, PRG, the same group, MetaLand, uh, Next Giant, Etika, and so on. So with this, the company also try to not overly rely on any single largest customer. In fact, a risk management strategy practice behind the scene. When we come to the civil engineering work, equally the same uh, practice beside the over secure for the same group, the company also secures some rock stabilization group for the same group from the East Coast Railway Link, also work from other uh, railway projects in Johor and others. So in terms of variety like mixed development, uh, the job for infrastructure, rock stabilization work, the job for the railway. If we take a look, the contract value secured by the company up to date is about 881 million. An outstanding contract yet to recognize is about 377.7 million. Okay, we not only give you the original secure value, we also give you outstanding value yet to recognize, start by 1st April 2022 and the construction period, then easier for you to do your own number crunching. What will be the likely revenue and profit could be generated by the company? If we combine earlier about 1.12 billion of the building construction job. Plus 377.7 million of civil engineering job, the outstanding contract value yet to recognize about 1.5 billion. If you take 500 million and multiply by three, it means that at least the next three years of visibility is able to be secured by the company. Moving forward, uh, what are the tender? The tender up to date as 31 March 2022, about 33 tender. Uh, value about on total basis about 3 billion. 33%, about 34% focus on building construction, 66% focus on the civil engineering and infrastructure. Out of this, 1 billion building construction uh, comprise about 10 tender, uh, 10 tender. It focus on like high rise residential building, the brick and butter business of the company, the commercial unit, the shop houses, spatial purpose uh, building like hotel, uh, and hospital, and so on. And civil engineering take out more because you and know you and me know very well. In order to stimulate the economy, the government have to spend more time for infrastructure. Therefore, the company also focus more to tender for infrastructure related job, close to about two billion, consists of about twenty three tender. It will be more focused on like government lead project, like ground treatment, the highway, the bridge and transportation infrastructure, the railway project, but. Last but not least, renewable energy project as well. Okay, the expansion plan. Uh, the company was listed on the June about 2021. On that time, the IPO proceed able to raise by the companies about 45 million cash. With the 45 million cash up to date, about 38 million of this spend. In the balance sheet, about 7 million is for IPO money. The money yet to spend will be like six million to establish the IPS uh, facility. I'll explain what's IPS subsequently. Yet to spend six million and upgrade the software and system one million, which is 
all in about seven million. The rest of money, like you need to acquire the machinery, a repayment bank, growing the working capital, all already expand, as well as a distinct expense of four million. Okay, establish of IBS facility. IBS stands for industrial building system. In the conventional way, when you go to see some of the high rise, you can see that the worker had to lay the bridge layer by layer to build out the wall, to build out the, the different part of the building. Whereas by using the IPS system, you can like prefab, prefabricated the wall, the window, uh, the floor, and, and even the bathroom and the staircase. When you bring on site, you can assemble and you can stack out one by one. So with this, the whole building process will be faster. Uh, what the company try to do here is by using the IPS, uh, they want to produce like pre-cast polo call slab. This is mostly used for the flooring or the parking podium. It can reduce the time by 40% compared with our conventional. Prefect hub slab use more for the tower block and so prefect bathroom unit. So with the bathroom unit, you can uh, prefect in uh, on the offsite and bring on site, you do all the assembly. So with this, not only can reduce the labor cost, uh, labor reduction, but also reduce the delivery time. It will become make the whole building process more sustainable. Oh, acquire all the machinery and art. I already explained earlier, money will be spent to buy the, all the necessary allocator, dump truck, and so on. Upgrade or software, the one million yet to spend. Okay. Now we come to uh, the business of renewable energy. When you take a look on this uh, photo, the sunlight is so bright. It means there's a lot of opportunity in the solar renewable energy business. When the company also expands into mini hydro, you see the water uh, look like it's not a come before the storm. Uh. The water emits a lot of money, a lot of potential. The company also try to venture into this mini hydro project, which I will elaborate more subsequently. Okay, the reason corporate development. The company will list on the 29th of June. Actually, the big boss that told him want to have a good sleep, but it can't. Because why? The next day morning, uh, 30th June 2021, immediately had to wake up, quickly go and secure the new order. On the 30th June 2021, the company secured 230 million of new contract to develop service apartment in Salamo. About two weeks later, then they secured another uh, 31 million contract to undertake the broad stabilization project at mixed demand project in Tamansala Patana. So this is uh, quite close to Empire City 1. On about a month, 2nd August, back another 25 million project for group work in Pontiac. This is uh, quite an uh, important job because it's close to a, a petrochemical oil gas sector. 19 August 2021, the company secure a Sumai Kelantan River Bank Rehabilitation Project, about 34 million. On 9 of June 2021, the company not only signed a strategic agreement with uh, Hatton Land, another listed company on the Singapore Stock Exchange, one of the property developers in the city center of Malacca, the company formed a JV company, 3070, in order to jointly develop any solar renewable energy project, can work together. And the first project, the both party negotiate is about the Palawan Mall. Palawan Mall is city center quite close to the A Famosa. On start by early of this year, 12 January 2022, the company secured 90 million project in relation to East Coast Rail Link project. So East Coast Railway. 19 of January 2022, 188.5 million of project to build a mixed development project. Mixed development, normally you can see at the ground floor, you can have a retail raw at the podium. Then on top is a service department. First of March, this is something very new. The company signed an MOU with M Bank, an M Bank Islamic Bank group, and basically M Bank group, uh, to expand solar renewable energy business. It means that in the event, uh, the company able to convince some of the private enterprise, whether it's commercial building, industrial building, they say, okay, good, uh, please uh, help me to install the rooftop uh, solar system. And the investment can cost a couple of few hundred thousand to million or 10 to 20 million. With this, M Bank will say, look, I will willing to lend and extend the financial uh, facility in order to install. Or at the same time, they need to pay the construction cost 
uh, as an APCC to the Nexcom. The Nexcom also can jointly invest with the owner. So all these things, you need a banker. And the banker here is MBank willing to do the financing and M bank also try to work with the next call and work together to say you assess on the corporate customer of bank we know very well in business you need a lot of friends and you need banker as well in order to make the business a perfect match formula first of april proposed acquisition of uh, in this uh, one solar company central solar center i will explain it later so whatever contract secure from here already included in the uh, 31st March 2022, as I mentioned just now, or in outstanding contract is about 1.5 billion yet to recognize. Okay, this is a cut of point, 31st March 2022. But moving forward, uh, you will ask, hey, what are the new contracts you secure? Start by 1st of April. Start by 1st of April. The company secure contract again. Uh, next con secure to design and complete the installation job. 31st May uh, to do the job for the mini hydro project, Nagri Mini Hydro Project. 13th of June, uh, the contract to build a, a service apartment. I'll go through it subsequently. 11th of May, this company secure a project for build and install the waste recovery facility at Kamaman Trinado. This project value is about 85 million, 36 months to complete. The second job secure subsequently will be in relation to the artwork uh, with this Negri Hydro project. So with this, the company received a letter of intent and the value of this job is about 91 million. Uh, this is show that the first time the company beside uh, doing the job for building construction also officially moved into the mini hydro project. All the job had to start with a one small step. The one small step will enable the company to explore and to open the door for the bigger opportunity in the future. Okay. On the 13th, 13 June 2022, a secure project to build 38 story for 670 units of residential apartment. Uh, this is an apartment job near this uh, KL. Okay. The job value of this grows to about 118 million and for about uh, 28 months of building project. What we are trying to share with everyone, if you sum out the project secured by the company, start by January of 2022 until today, today we are talking about almost end, uh, early of the July, the company already secured about 500 million of new contract. Uh, earlier in the year, some investors will make the management this update, roughly how much uh, new order can secure. The company give the some uh, sharing and guidance say probably for the one whole year it will be only about four to five hundred million from January until December of two or two two. But the actual result came out as performed beyond the expectation. It's already five hundred million for the first six months. So hope that this momentum can continue and will bring more good development to all the investor and the shareholder as well. Okay, I will not go through this part. Okay, go to the financial performance. The financial performance of the company is the best performance 2019 uh, before the pandemic. The pandemic for 2020 and 2021 is a quite a tough market, yet the company able to maintain a quite a good revenue about 345 million in financial 2020 and 360 million of financial of 2021. The profit after tax was slightly lowered down from about 14 million lowered down to 12 million. The main reason of slightly lowered down or couple of reasons. The first reason is because the listing took place in about uh, June 2021. There's a listing expense at the charge of, uh, of a loss account. The second reason, if you do recall, FMCO happened in 2021. It's very tough. Not only all the all the uh, non essential service uh, industry and the shop not able to open, including construction industry. So with this, the company not able to fully optimize to work for full child month. Therefore, the the drop in profits naturally. Okay, if this profit may do some adjustment because in two hundred two one the first time the company listed on stock exchange, there's two million charged to the profit and loss account. If we add back the two million profit. Then the profit is not 12 million, it should be about 14 million. The profit margin is about 
Uh, pertaining to this slide, uh, we will provide to Kanaga, uh, to the Shan Chu. You can request from him. We also will leave our message for you to uh, extract the slide and uh, get it from us. This will be the uh, financial results. You can get from other report. I will not go through it. You can pick on your own. This is an account we like to draw attention. If we will have add back the 2 million listing expenses, the profit reported will not be 12.8 million in the annual report 2022. It should be about 14.8 million uh, profit before tax and profit after tax will be about 14 million, much higher. So with this, the profit margin will remain as good as in the past two, three years from 2019 until 2021 financial year. Out of 4 million, the first 2 million already charged to the profit and loss account. The second 2 million is capitalized under the balance sheet, under the share listing expense. So all in, the 4 million listing expense already fully accounted for. Where does it show? Okay, Let me show with you, uh, this is an original announcement. This will show you. Uh, first quarter 2021 and second quarter 2022, we already fully charged the listing expense. The other 2 million is charged and capitalize the balance sheet. So moving forward, we demonstrate to all the investor that there's no more listing expenses will affect and distort the performance of the company start by third quarter of 2021 and 2022, to, uh, fourth quarter of 2021. The only thing that distort is because FNCO. We are dealing the FNCO is very tough. We are talking about June, July, August, almost as September only most of the people can back to the work with like 70% capacity, even full capacity. So therefore, that quarter you can see revenue is still there, but profit have slightly lower down, not running a loss, just at least a break even with about a million profit. When come to fourth quarter, strong rebound. Come to first quarter of 2022, slightly slow down because it's normalized. Uh, one of the reasons why they were outstanding job need to rush to complete in October, November, December. When come to first quarter of 2022, uh, slightly cost increase because of the banking facility, there's some expenses, but also a short working uh, month, especially during the Chinese New Year. So all in will be slightly slow down at normalized patterns. Uh, what we need to urge all the investors is focus on year to year performance, it's not Q to Q. Q to Q, anybody, anyone business subject to a certain volatility. Okay, I want to share with everyone is more important the strategy of the company will be on this part. Early day, the company will really focus on like the majority of the revenue generated from building construction, about 80%, then drop to 70%. Today, the building construction project is about 58%, about 60%. Whereas 40% of the job used to be only 11% infrastructure, now grow to 25, grow to 41, about 40% 40 of the job is from the, uh, this uh, infrastructure. So the companies adopt a balance and push in order to not only rely on any single segment, not only influenced by and distorted by another segment. When you study further, early day, most of the job is very much focused on residential. As the time progress, now it's quite well balanced. Out of 60%, about one third is focused on building the residential building, one third is commercial industrial building, one third is a mixed development. All these things, it take time to transform. All this transform is not for yesterday. It is standby to withstand the very difficult period in 2020, 2020 and 2021 during the pandemic period. If not adopt a very good risk management strategy, then probably it's quite tough to pull through this kind of difficult period. Uh, this, this is the put in number. Basically, for you to see is that 60% is uh, building construction, 40% is infrastructure. Okay. This we just to show you that early day really focus very much on residential, blue in color. Now you will be like quite evenly spread between residential building, commercial industrial building, and mixed development. So all this is a, a silly of risk management strategy adopted behind the scene. In the balance sheet wise, the company will have very strong current ratio. If we take a low historical until the latest balance sheet of 31st March, about 1.3 times, the company have a total bank borrowing. Uh, this short term debt, total debt, we take in account also the leasing uh, because some of the equipment buy through the leasing, or is about 95 million. The cash in the bank account, the latest 127 million. 
127 minus 95, the company in the net cash position about 32.3 million. If we take 95 divided by shareholder fund, the gearing ratio is about 74. But you take in account all the cash in the bank, actually the company in the net cash position. Cash flow wise, everything is quite all right. So I won't spend time to go through. The cash financing cash flow increased a lot is because of IPO money raised in the financial of 2021, 43 million net proceed uh, risk. Therefore, the total cash increase about 52 million in financing cash inflow. Okay, shareholding spread. What we need to share with everyone is uh, during the pre-IPO, uh, there will be about 85% owned by two uh, founders, Dr. Uh, Dr. Lim and Mr. Ong, about 85 and about 14. After the listing, 60% owned by the uh, MD, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Lim and Mr. Ong, Yok Chuan, 10%. The 30% is a free flow. Fast track to today, uh, the latest annual report statistic for 31st March 2022, 60% and 10% and the balance 30%. Okay, I leave this slide uh, here for you to contact us in the event. If you need the presentation slide, uh, please uh, feel free to WhatsApp the number and also email to us, we will send the presentation slide to you accordingly. We are not going to run through every single slide, all in the total slide, about 81 pages. So we are not going through every page, otherwise it will take too long a time. In order to expand into this business, the company in 1st of April 2022 decided to acquire one APCC engineering company uh, to spend about 3 million to acquire this called the Centra Solar Sanepaha. The three million to buy from the existing shareholder of Central Solar is not all paid in uh, cash. Uh, the cash is about uh, 1.18 million, and 1.88 million is cash, 1.12 million is issuing the new share under the subsidi subsidiary called Nextcon Sustainable Sanepaha. So, with this, I will not go through all the detail. The more important is for investors like you who say, oh, you buy this company, uh, any good benefit you can gain. The vendor of this company say, okay, I'll give you a profit guarantee. For 31st December 2022, 2 million profit guarantee. Next year, 2 million, 2023. Next, next year, 31st December 2024, another 2 million. So cumulatively, by spending 3 million, the company will get about 6 million profit guarantee over the next uh, 3 years. Okay, I will end this part of presentation. Please allow me to go through one small part because uh, this is not in the slide is uh, because the announcement just made on yesterday before today first more open so i need to share this part this is about private placement of the new share shane i will take another five more minutes to end on yesterday uh, 13 Ju july 2022 the company made an announcement to the stock chain Ever since the company raised about 45 million from the IPO, now company come to the capital market again to fully capitalize the benefit as a public listed company. The company intend to raise about 10% new share uh, by wire prior placement. At this moment, the company has about 643.8 million of total share. If 10%, the number of new share going to issue is about 64.38 million, 10%. So that's number one. I will choose and pick the important thing in this announcement rather than go through everyone. The second question people ask, what will be the price? Uh, the, the price trading for the next con for the past few weeks or the past, the past, past month, for the past Friday with the average is about 40 cents. In the event of the uh, in, indicative, like, let's say give about 8.8% discount to the investor, then the new share will issue about 37 cents. So this 37 cent in the event you actually issue is much higher than the IPO price when the company raised in the June of 2021, which is 28 cent. So it means that the benefit of 50% higher or even more than 50% higher than 28 cent. Who will be the person able to subscribe this share? This share is not going to uh, place out to the existing shareholder, not going to assisting director, the major shareholder, 
and the CEO and the founder of the company. It means that it's not going to Dr. Lim, it's not going to Mr. Ong. It will be go to the third party independent, non-related investor they can subscribe to you share. In short, the money is not called from shareholder, it's raised from the third party investor who bring in the money to expand the business for, uh, further. How much the money able to raise based on 37 cents? So the 64 million multiple by 37 cents, it's going to raise about 23.82 million. The utilization is very, very fully focused on the expand the business further. First, for building and construction job, rental machinery, spend 3 million, purchase of construction material, 10 million, payment to the subcontractor, 7.17 million, purchase of material for renewable energy segment, 3 million. So this 33, 23.8 million will come in handy to further grow the expansion of the company moving forward. Okay. For the investor, the next question people always ask is like, okay, now I know you're going to issue 10% new share, uh, how much more share I able to expect in order for me to calculate some earning per share, uh, diluted earning per share. At this moment, 643 million plus 64.38. The total and large share capital going to trading in the market will be 708 million. Assuming the issuing of 10% new share is going to complete in the second half of 2022. Okay. So with this, what will be the performance effect? Uh, effect. Performance effect, it means that assuming based on 31st December 2021, this exercise is completed with 10% new share, what have you changed? By issuing new share, the first thing is the share capital will be enhanced. From 101 million ringgit will increase to 124.125 million ringgit. With this, the shareholder fund will increase from 127 million to about 150 million. In meanwhile, uh, working on the 31st December 2021, the interest bearing bank growing about 82 million. The gearing ratio is 65%. If this new share issue, the gearing ratio will reduce further. So with this, you can anticipate some cost saving uh, from this uh, uh, issue and new share. At the same time, there is a tem temporarily earning percent dilution when there is a 10% new share issue. But bear in mind, all this uh, money raised is for the expansion of the business moving forward. You will bring in additional earning to the company moving forward. I think with this, uh, I try to end all my presentation. Uh, Sufficiently. Okay, Shen, over back to you for the QA section. All right, thank you so much, Yafsing, for the presentation. So now I would like to invite uh, Dato Dr. Lim and also uh, the CFO, uh, Ms. Lim Ju Sheng, to join us in this uh, QA session. All right, so if you have any questions to ask the management of NESCON, you may write your question in the QA box, not the chat box here, in the QA box. All right, so the first question is, what is your comment on the generally investors may have uh, may have an impression that Nescom business is overly reliant on uh, Exim Group, property developer, as a single largest customer? How do you plan to deviate away the risk of over-reliance on the single largest customer? Uh, no doubt. Exim is uh, one of our major clients. Uh, Dato, can you speak closer no. to the microphone? No, I, I Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I uh, can hear you better. Can you hear me better? Yeah. Okay, uh, Exim is actually one of our major clients. Uh. However, we do not actually depend on Exim uh, on our business continuity uh, as our contract with them are secured on a contract by contract basis. Uh. As of uh, 30th June 2023, 2022 uh, this year, three out of our eight ongoing building projects come from Exim Groups. Uh, while uh, we have only two out of our ongoing infra projects uh, are from uh, Exim Groups. Uh. So in short, for the total 16 projects that uh, we are currently having now, uh, we secured from uh, nine different clans. Uh. Uh, moreover, we are we have been actively participating in tenders 
from a large pool of uh, client base. Uh. Contribution from this client would come on stream in the second half of this year if we are successful in securing some of these contracts. Okay, thank you so much, Tato, for the, your clarification. Now, the latest quarterly result shows that Nescon is at net cash position. But if we exclude those cash in your balance sheet, the, then the gross gearing ratio of Nescon is around 75%. So what would be the optimal capital structure going to adopt by the company in the future? Or what is the comfortable gearing ratio going to pursue by the company in both short and long term? Um, actually, we do not fix any maximum uh, gearing ratio for our company um, as uh, we wish to maintain the flexibility while we are expecting, you know, expanding our business. Uh, if assuming that we have to build up more income assets for our renewable energy business, naturally, our gearing ratio will move up in order to fund the long-term assets. So our company is still in the growing phase. I would say the best uh, capital structure uh, is the best mix of uh, both debts and equity financing, like what we have uh, raised from our IQ exercise. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Lim, for answering these questions. Um, can you give us a general industry outlook for the for your industry construction industry in this year now since nascon focus on you know bidding for more infrastructure related job moving forward as shown in your tender book beside bidding for um building construction job so what would be the new order book replenishment likely to achieve by nascon in this year uh, in a longer term we are optimistic like, on the construction industry despite uh, the short-term headwinds. Uh, according to the market research by Protege Associates, uh, the domestic construction is set to grow at a 7.3% KGA to a market size of uh, close to 76 billion uh, in 2025. Uh, to me, the construction industry is set to rebound and grow. Uh, attributable to the uh, various uh, stimulus package uh, from the government as a result of the uh, continuity of the infrastructure projects such as uh, ECRL, East Coast uh, Railway Link, uh, even for the uh, Johor Bahru Singapore Rapid Transit System, and the uh, Pen Bonio Highway as well as the uh, Central Spine Road. Uh. Uh, as for MRT3, notice of tender was issued early of uh, last month. Uh, on a uh, longer term, we also hope uh, this uh, KL Singapore High Speed Rail will be uh, given green light to implement. Uh, I would say probably after the uh, G15, which is likely to happen within the next six months. Uh. Of course, recently we all know uh, the Malaysian and the Thai government has also establish a joint committee to explore the uh, high-speed rail connection between the Bangkok and uh, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, so there will be opportunity along the way for us to be one of the uh, project participants. Uh, considering our past involvement in the railway-based infra job, such as uh, this uh, electrified double-track project from uh, Gemas to Johor Bahru and also ECRL. Uh, uh, with regards to the uh, new order book uh, replenishment uh, likely to achieve by NESCON this year. Uh, so, as we mentioned, uh, as I mentioned by Yasin earlier, so for the first half of this year, we have managed to secure 500 million worth of jobs. Uh, for the uh, second half, uh, we are actually expecting the letter award for Nangri Dam, uh, which we have received the uh, letter intent on uh, 30th May. Uh. Uh, we have also submitted tenders for these uh, mini hydro dams, even for ECRL and in, uh, some infrastructure project in Sarawak. Uh. So let's hope uh, we will secure more contracts in the uh, second half of this year. All right, certainly hope so. 
Okay, the next question is, now recently, Nescon has signed an NOU with M-Bank, uh, M-Bank Banking Group, in order for the banking group to provide the necessary financing to support uh, your initiative to expand in solar renewable energy business as an asset owner. So could you please update us so far, how is the uh, response amongst the M-Bank Banking Group corporate clients? Do you have any good news you would like to share with us? Uh, this initiative with M-Bank represents a breakthrough uh, in our ambition to expand into this uh, renewable solar energy business. Uh. Through this collaboration, we'll be able to provide M-Bank non-individual customers uh, direct access to uh, green energy. Uh, at the same time, this marks a step forward uh, in realizing our joint vision to create a world generated by renewable energy and to create a green living and working environment in Malaysia. Uh, we, regards to a re response, it has been uh, so far quite promising uh, because M-Banks will only refer to us uh, on those uh, so-called non individual customers that have positive interest uh, in adoption of the uh, renewable energy in uh, this uh, electricity generation. Uh. So far, very promising. All right, that's good to hear that. Um, okay, let's go to the next question. Now, on the 1st April this year, you announced that your company is going to acquire 100% stake in um, Central Solar, which is an EPCC contractor and project management company for $3 million. So it's interesting to discover that the vendors of Central Solar are agreeable to provide a profit guarantee of cumulative $6 million over the next three financial years on you. Uh, just for three million selling price, um, is that Central Solar already secured a few hundred um million contract, which enable them to provide such a high profit guarantee to Nescon? If no, what exactly is Nescon buying uh, into by spending three million? Oh, Central Solar is currently known as a uh, Nescon Solar. Uh, actually, uh, we have some proposal in hand uh, which we are unable to disclose further information at this point of time. Uh, uh, we will make necessary announcement if there is any further development. Uh, acquiring Central Solar is part of our expansion plan into renewable energy business. Uh. As we foresee, securing energy sustainability is, is, that, is, is that essential for Malaysia. And this is in line with the, uh, our government objective to rely more on renewable energy as one of the environmental friendly electricity sources and to reduce the uh, carbon footprint due to the threat of uh, climate change. Uh, many policies have been implemented to to develop and uh, promote the use of uh, RE. Uh. All right. Um, so how does Nescon Solar compete in this crowded marketplace as more and more EPCC contractors and asset owners come on board in the past few years? What are your competitive edge? Oh, in any businesses, I think competition is not... Uh, we, we cannot avoid competition, uh. Compared to our competitors or peers, I must say our competitive uh, advantage lies in our extensive experience in the construction industry uh, and also our existing customer base. Uh, this is because uh, most of our existing, uh, current existing clients uh, are real estate uh, development companies and we are assisting them in uh, the construction of various type of uh, residential, commercial, and even industrial properties. Uh. Uh, we are planned to submit our proposal for solar PV rooftop system to our clients, especially our uh, current construction contract with them, uh, as well as our future project. Uh. Uh, considering our business relationship that we have uh, established with them, I think we have a uh, better age. Also, uh, we have established a good working relationship with the uh, financial institution 
through our existing construction businesses. Uh. This will, in a way, give us uh, some advantage uh, of got, getting the uh, financial support uh, from the banks uh, in our renewable energy business. Uh, while it is apparent that uh, solar energy has got a strong growth prospect, uh, there's actually a big gap between what uh, would appear to be the market potential and the actual achievement. Uh. The growth of the sector has been quite slow in relation to its potential, I would say probably due to the uh, dysfunction structure of the industry at present. Uh, one of the uh, potential problems causing this slow progress could be the uh, financing being not easy to obtain. Uh, and uh, this mismatch between the needs and the building owners and the structural uh, of the uh, financing scheme. Uh, uh, you see, our collaboration with the uh, M-Bank will address uh, all these constraints. Uh. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dato. Now, the next question is, the company is tendering for 3 billion jobs. So what is the success rate and how much worth of the job Nescon is eyeing to win this year? You see, we have uh, secured 500 million in the... Uh, First half of this year, actually our tender success rate is in the range of 15 to 20 percent. So based on our tender books that stand in at a three billion, actually in a way we have in the first half we have managed to hit our target already. But we are still optimistic that we will secure some of the. Contracts are that uh, we are currently tendering. Uh, we, are, we are currently tendering for this uh, mini hydro project, uh, even uh, some infrastructure jobs at uh, Sarawak. And of course, we have been uh, actively participating in the tenders uh, on this uh, ECIL. Uh, we, this, we will definitely secure more than 500 million this year. Mm, okay, so do you mind to share with us how much of your order book will be recognized in this year? Uh, this year will be around uh, three, 300 million, 300, 300 million. Uh. 300 million, huh? Now, we know that this is, you know, a very highly inflationary environment. So is Nescon facing any margin compression? What is the potential margin compression for this year if you are facing any? I, I must say that we feel the pressure. Uh, uh, you see, it is true that the, the, the raw material, so called is uh, the price of the raw material has gone up and we feel the pressure. But uh, there is an uh, indication that. Uh, the price is uh, coming down. Uh, of course, we are quite lucky in the sense that uh, based on our unbuilt order book of uh, 1.6 billion, uh, uh, close to 1.2 billion, we have uh, this uh, VOP clause which we can claim for this uh, fluctuation of uh, this. Uh, we can ask for compensation for fluctuation. Uh, uh, for those without the VOP clause, uh, which is approximately 400 million, the worst scenario, I would say the impact will be in the range of uh, 2 to 3% of the mar margin uh, compression. That is the uh, worst scenario. Worst of scenario, 2 to 3%? Uh? Yep. Okay. Okay, not too bad. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure if you have address this question adequately, but there's the next question is, do you mind to share with us more detail of your grand plan in the RE segment? Oh, okay. <laughs> we have been uh, actively exploring these uh, market opportunities. Uh, uh, but uh, of course, I, I can say solar and uh, these are uh, mini hydro. Uh, but then I cannot disclose more information here. Uh, we will make the necessary announcement if there's a 
further development. Okay, understand your concern. Do you have skilled workers shortage problems since the labor shortage is you know ravaging across the country? Yep, like most construction companies, uh, we are dependent on foreign workers. Uh, a shortage of foreign workers is one of the uh, biggest challenges uh, faced by all the uh, industry players. Uh. Uh, it is not within construction industry, I say all the industry in Malaysia, uh, we are facing this uh, labor shortage. Uh. We are urging our government to resolve this uh, labor issue quickly. <laughs> uh, but of course, we are moving forward. Uh, we are looking at ways to reduce the uh, dependency on the foreign workers. Uh. Uh, uh, that's why we plan to uh, establish the IES facility, which is uh, less labor intensive. Uh. Foreign workers are actually now very demanding. They are asking salary from 4,000 to 5,000. Uh, so, we, of course, uh, we are in the sense uh, quite lucky that we have obtained the uh, uh, approval for the government to, to import 820 uh, foreign labourers. Uh. We are now preparing to uh, pay the levy, hopefully uh, in a month or two, uh, we can get all these uh, foreign workers to come in uh, to support our existing job. What's the breakdown of your uh, labor force composition? Uh, how many percent are from foreign laborers and where are they from? Uh, foreign laborers uh, contribute up to, I think, 70% of our total workforce. 70%? Uh? Yep, yep. Mm. Are many from Bangladesh? Uh, com now mainly is Bangladesh, Bangladesh, Indonesia, uh, but mainly is Bangladesh. Okay, so will the foreign labor shortage affect your delivery? Yes, uh, that's why our actually we are currently operating at a uh, seventy percent of our capacity. Uh. As I you see before the pandemic. We, our revenue is uh, actually 400 million. Uh. In 2019, our revenue was uh, 422 million. Uh. But uh, during the pandemic, and uh, during this point of time, uh, we have the uh, so-called labor shortage. Our revenue drops to uh, 300 million. Uh. Uh, so I was just there's a reason size. We are actually operating at 70 70 percent 70 percent of our capacity. Yeah, I think the weakening of Malaysian radio also exacerbate the situation. Yep, yep. So what is the dividend payout um, three years prior to the IPO? And uh, what is the payout as a percentage of profit? Uh? Uh, okay, let me take this question. Yeah. Yes, so go ahead. So in um, 2020, we didn't declare any dividend. Um, in 2018, yes, and in 2019, yes, about 2 million each for, for each of the year is about 14% 14, 14 for 2019 out of the profit, the percentage. And for 2018, is about 20% out of the profit. So we didn't declare on, um, in 2020 and also we didn't declare in 2021. Moving mm. forward, of course, uh, we wish to declare. It, it all depends on our cash, cash flow position and also um, the requirement of all the KPEX and our um, business expanding purpose. Okay, understand that. Thanks, yeah. Ms. Lim. Um, continuing on this labor shortage uh, issue, uh, Terry would like to ask, how many more workers do you need to reach optimal level? Also, Dr. Okay. Lin, you mentioned about the rise in uh, raw materials and building material costs. How much is the quantum has risen so far? And what is the expectation for the second half? Uh, that's why we, we, ha we have actually, we, we got to justify uh, the requirement uh, before the authority can approve our numbers. Uh. That's why uh, eight, 800 packs uh, is sufficient uh, to, to, to 
cover the uh, current shortage. Uh. Oh, 800. Uh, that's why we got the approval of uh, 820. Mm. All right. I think uh, Yap Singh need to show some slide, right? And uh, yeah, would you want to explain about this, the steel price? Oh, okay. For the uh, steel price, uh, you, you see that uh, uh, based on the uh, landing indicators from US and also the industrial metals markets, uh, uh, it shows an uh, early sign of uh, easing. Uh, the price has actually come down. Uh, the, the steel bar price has gone up uh, from 2004 to 3008, but now we are only purchasing at about 3000 to 3002. 3, uh. You can see it, the price has actually come, come down. Uh. Uh, regarding the, uh, I want to clarify on the usage of a steel. Uh, so the usage of a steel actually very much depending on the uh, completion stage of a project. Uh. You see, we have, uh, so currently we have uh, eight ongoing projects. Uh. So all these eight, all these ongoing projects are, are actually at different stages of uh, completion. So as a result, some would uh, require lesser amount of steel. Uh. You see, let's say we are at the structural stage, okay, the amount, the amount of uh, steel and uh, cement will be more. Uh. But when it comes to architectural stage, so they, 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 they won't impact us. Uh. Uh, for, furthermore, we NESCON, we have a diversified portfolio between the uh, infrastructure and building segment. Uh has actually further reduced the impact to the group as a whole. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, based on our undue order book of 1.6 billion, uh, uh, 1.2 billion we have uh, is a VOP clause uh, which we can uh, nego with the client for compensation due to the uh, price fluctuation. Uh, for those projects without the uh, VOP clause, variation of price, uh, why? Why just now I say the impact are the the impact will be two to three percent. Uh, actually, we have worked out. Uh, we, we have some figure to work out. Uh. So for a uh, high rise, uh, high rise projects, I uh, say is uh, six hundred units. Uh, the size is like uh, say average uh, nine hundred uh, square feet per unit. The construction cost uh, is uh, approximately I would say about one hundred and fifty million. Uh. So the amount of steel required to complete the whole so-called apartment uh, is in the range of uh, 3,000 to 4,000 ton. Uh. Assuming the average, uh, the steel price increased by 1,000 per ton uh, uh, throughout the uh, whole contract duration, uh, 1,000, if let's say you say three, three average of uh, 3,005 ton, so 1,000 times 3,005 is uh, 3.5 million. Uh. Then in terms of concrete, uh, so if let's say we have 3,500 uh, ton of uh, steel, the amount of concrete will be uh, about uh, 35,000. Let's say the concrete increased by 20 ringgit per meter cube. So 350,000, uh, uh, sorry, 35,000 meter cube times 20 ringgit is about so called, uh, say it's 20 ringgit, la. it's about 600,000. So the whole impact will be a 4 million. La. So 3.5 million, 600,000, 4.1 million, 4.1 million against uh, this uh, 150 million, the impact will be 2 to 3 percent, the impact in terms of uh, monetary value. La. Mm, okay, thank you so much, Tato. Um, the next question is, would you venture into construction or renewable uh, projects overseas? So this uh, uh, is uh, not, not, not this point of time. <laughs> you still focus uh, uh, in Malaysia, probably uh, Sabah, Sarawak, but not overseas. All right, so the next question is, since the company has surpassed annual order book win target, is there a revised or new target for the year? 
yes, I must uh, for the second half of this year, I think we can easily secure another two to three contracts easily. So this year itself, we might be able to secure a total new order of 800 million, 900 million, because we are really secure 500 million. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Lim. Now, the next question is, is there a concern that the inflation will bring a slower market in property and construction? And how do you plan to move in this challenging time? Um, as I mentioned, yeah, on the longer term, we are still optimistic uh, on the construction industry. Optimistic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so the next question is, how do you plan to mitigate the shortage of labor foreseen, especially from Indonesia government suspending migrant workers to Malaysia? Uh, I think this will be sorted out soon. Uh, because right. you see, uh, for us, actually, we don't actually depend on, uh, we don't depend much on uh, Indonesia workers anymore because the cost of uh, getting the uh, Indonesian workers to come in is much higher compared to the Bangla, even the salary, because you know, uh, the economy in uh, Indonesia, I must say, is better than, than Malaysia now. So, the late, I would say they, they, they can they can make more money in Indonesia rather than in Malaysia. That's why we, we cannot afford to pay them. Those are Indonesian uh, workers that we, we need is actually highly skillful workers, which we need them uh, to guide the uh, Bangladeshi worker. So say so we have uh, we call them a kapala, they will guide. Uh, 30 workers, 20 workers. Uh, so we are still depending on Bangla uh, rather than uh, Indonesia. Okay. I understand. Um, the next question is How is your venture into Sarawak? Oh, Sarawak. Uh, be patient. <laughs> Be patient. Uh, be patient, uh, okay. Just be patient. Uh, we, I cannot disclose uh, more information now. Just be patient for another two months. <laughs> okay. Be patient, huh? Uh, be patient. <laughs> okay. The next question is by Chi Kyung. Can you share with us are the steel and cement purchased by your subcontractors or by your company itself and is the foreign labor nascon own labor or your subcontractors labor did you have a vop clause with your subcontractor oh uh, so for the steel and cement we will purchase uh, on our own it is not a true subcons of course we have our uh, sub labels uh, but uh, sub the material is uh, solely purchased by us as for the uh, foreign labors, we have our own labors and uh, some of trade we actually uh, subletting to uh, subcontractors. Uh. Mm, but uh, as for the VOP clause, of course, some of the, depending on the contract, so you see a lot of, uh, uh, depending on the contract, uh, some we have a VOP clause and uh, some we, even with the VOP clause, sometimes, uh, Subcontractors, we, we, we understand them. Uh, if let's say the price increased by too much, uh, they cannot make a living uh, from our subcontract. They will definitely uh, they cannot continue with us. Uh. So we got to talk to them on how to uh, give them a compensation uh, so that to ensure they, they continue the job. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lim. So, Dato, what is your biggest fear 
in this Nescon business? Can you share with us? Uh, biggest fear. Mm. Oh. Like what keeps you awake at night? No, oh, we, we have no fear. We work very hard. We work day and night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. uh, we keep ah. moving. Uh, yes. All right. <laughs> Understand. Okay, it looks like there are no more questions on my questions panel. So, yeah, I think we have done all questions. Thank you so much, Dato Lim and also uh, Miss Lim for uh, addressing uh, all the attendees' questions on uh, during this Q&A session. So, of course, if you uh, want the slide, you may reach out to Yap Singh to obtain the slide. Yeah? Okay. Yap Singh. Okay, Yap Singh, yeah, I think it's the share, is it? No. Uh, okay, Robbie, can you put me back? I just do a short, short conclusion. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, we come to the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for joining today's event. Before we get up to the, to give a, a closing speech, uh, for those investors and shareholders who follow the next con, seeing the listing day, you always remember this is a, a construction, building construction and infrastructure uh, company. But bear in mind, with the twin grow engine come forward, uh, renewable energy not only focus on uh, solar PV uh, rooftop system alone, but also uh, focus on mini hydro. All this will become in tandem. The idea for them to come on board is not only they come as a two in one, service provider to their end client should it be the uh, property developer a real estate company or building construction uh, this uh, industrial building owner but they will come as a three in one if they can start with a work complete after that they build the building on the ground on top of the building should it be factory should it be high-rise building they build the rooftop solar system and either join it on with the uh, asset owner or they will serve as the EPCC service provider to the building owner. All this come in collective basis. This integrated model will increase the competitiveness in tandem with what they are trying to do moving forward. Nobody can receive the chain, but the company who chain will be last forever. That's where Nextcon itself, uh, it allows us to do a bit of marketing. Nextcon, it means next construction company you should look for so back to you Shen. all right thank you so much you saying for giving us a concluding uh, statement all right so thank you so much everyone for tuning in to this webinar brought to you by kentrade so our next kentrade webinar is titled uh inflation posing challenges but opportunities uh beckon all right so this session will be conducted in mandarin uh that will take place on next Thursday, 21st of July, 2022. Uh, we will talk about how do we, uh, you know, how do we navigate in this in this next quarter uh, amid a rising inflationary environment. So the uh, senior analyst from Kunanga will share with us where are the opportunities to look out for in the next quarter. All right. So I've given you the registration link. You may go ahead and register if you want to hear, if you want to hear uh, what, the senior analyst from Kananga, uh, Mr. Tay, to talk about this session in Mandarin. All right. So if you haven't had a Kananga share trading account, you may fill up this form, this online form, which is www.cantrade.com.my forward slash open dash account dash form. So if uh, once you're keen, your interest here, Kananga will arrange a friendly dealer representative to cater to your needs to open a trading account with them. So uh, if you want to get trading ideas, you may join Kenanga Trade to Win Telegram channel. So that's where you can get trading ideas on uh, where is the TP, where is the stop loss, what kind of stocks have momentum. So yes, you may join this Kenanga Trade to Win Telegram channel, which I've also given you in the chat, uh, chat box. All right. So thank you everybody for tuning in to this uh, Ken Trade webinar. Hope you have gained enormous value from this session, learning about Nescon uh, business as well as the growth prospect. So thank you so much to both our panelists, uh, three of our panelists, which are Dr. Lim, uh, who is the uh, Group Managing Director of Nescon, uh, Ms. Lim, 
uh, who is the Chief Financial Officer of Nescon, as well as uh, Mr. Tan Yap Singh, who is the IR representative of Nescon. With that, thank you, everybody, and have a great uh, rest of the day. Bye, everyone. Yeah, good See night. you on Bye. next Thursday. Thank you soon.